see some millionaires walking out of here tonight. I, I see some walking out of here tonight. Oh, God, you protect our loved ones. You protect our neighbors. You protect our friends. You protect our co-workers. Oh, God, you even protect our enemies. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today for your goodness that you have provided us on today. For, Father, as we have come into your house and gathered in your name as you have commanded, Father, give us a word. Give us a word of life on today. Oh, God, give us the power to be able to hear. Oh, God, the power to be able to see and power to embrace, oh, God, in our heart what you're doing on today. Oh, God, we thank you that you're the same God today as you were on yesterday. And, oh, God, by faith, you're going to be the same God on tomorrow. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, come in the midst of your people. Oh, God, where are you? You said where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Father, we thank you on today. We thank you for not only what you're doing right now, but what you're going to do. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, continue to bless our leader. Continue to bless our first lady. Continue to bless everyone, oh, God, under the sound of my voice, oh, God, that they may, oh, God, give glory that's due to your name. Help us, oh, God, to follow him as he follows Christ. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, bless and expand the territories you've already done. Father, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Neither have been into our heart the things that you have prepared for us that love you. So, oh God, we thank you today, and we give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, and the church of God said, thank God, and amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm going to be reading from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of you of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. The word of the Lord is blessed.
Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Be flat, he said. Be flat. Yes, yes. Anybody ready to praise the Lord? Come on, give God a hand of praise. Come on. It's kind of an old song, but oh, Lord. Come on. We praise you, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. We praise. We praise. Oh, Lord, say, oh, we praise you. Praise. Oh, Lord. Oh, we praise you. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, we praise you. Praise. Oh, Lord. Oh, we praise you. Lift your voice and say, oh, Lord, we praise you. Praise. Oh, Lord. Oh, we praise you. Oh, Lord, say, oh, oh, Lord, we praise you. We praise. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, we praise you. Let's go to this same. Say, I command my soul to bless the Lord. Say, I command my soul to bless the Lord. Say it again. I command my soul to bless the Lord. To bless the Lord. I command. I, I command, command my soul to bless the Lord. To bless the Lord. Say, hands, 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 hands. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hands, 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 hands. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hands, 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 hands. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hands, 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 hands. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I command. I command my soul. Bless the Lord. To bless the Lord. I command. I command my soul. Bless the Lord. To bless the Lord. I command my soul. I command my soul. To bless the Lord. To bless the Lord. I command my soul. I command my soul. To bless the Lord. To bless the Lord. Hands, 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 hands. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hands, 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 hands. Bless the Lord. Hands, hands, hands. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless Come on. The Lord. Say feet, 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 feet. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Feet, 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 feet. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hands, 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 hands. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hands, 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 hands. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Feet, 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 feet. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Feet, 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 feet. Bless the Lord. The Lord with me. Bless 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 the Lord with me. Yes. Bless the Lord with me. Clap your hands with me. Clap your hands with me. Put them together and clap. Clap your hands with me. Clap your hands. Clap your hands with me. Clap your hands with me. Clap your hands with me. Dance before the Lord. Say dance before the Lord. Do like David did and dance. Dance before the Lord. Dance before the Lord. Dance before the Lord. Dance before the Lord. Dance. Come on, we're ready for the highest race. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Come on and ring it out. Say hallelujah. Let them hear your Michigan Avenue. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Hey. Come on and bless the Lord with me. 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 Yes, bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Yes, bless the Lord with me. Clap your hands with me. Come on, say. Clap your hands with me. Clap your hands. Yes. Clap your hands with me. He's worthy to be praised. Say, clap your hands. Clap your hands with me. Clap your hands with me. Yes. Clap. Let's ring up. Highest praise. Hallelujah. Did he give you food on your table? 
where you are. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, yeah. Hallelujah. Lord, I love you, say. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Yeah, yeah. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I Pray, oh Lord, I praise you. Say, Lord, I pray you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I pray you. Lord, I praise you. Yes, Lord, I pray. Give him the highest praise. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Is he worthy to be praised? Say, Hallelujah. 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 Say it again. Oh, oh. Hallelujah. Say, Hallelujah. Ooh, ooh. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more time, sing. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love. Do you really love them? Lift your hands if you love them. Lord. Lord, we love you. That's why we make you first priority. Lord, we love you. Oh, Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Oh, Lord, we love you. Lord, we With your hands extended. Lord, we love you. One more hallelujah say. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your name, oh God. Then we'll, we'll pick up in Romans 10 and 17. Let me start with Romans 10 and 17. So the first foundation is you need to speak the word. Amen. I'm going to write that down. So I'm going to speak the word. And then you need to believe the word. Speak the word, believe the word, hear the word, and do the word. Uh, Speak the word, believe the word, hear the word, and do the word. Amen. Those are the four foundations of your faith. Speak the word, believe the word, hear the word, and then do the word. Now, what happens is, is that you have to be careful that you never try to give faith a time limit. Amen. When you have, when you have faith to believe, you believe that God is going to work out your situation within his timing. Now, sometimes God's timing will line up with your timing, and sometimes it will not. Amen. That's why you got to call it faith. Because the Lord is never late. Come on, somebody. See, sometimes we speak in the word or we're speaking a word, but we haven't heard the word we need for that situation. So in every situation, I've got to speak the word. I've got to hear the word. I've got to believe the word. And I've got to do the word. And many times we don't mind talking, but we mind doing We'll talk all day, but what are we going to do? What are we going to do to show God that we have works with what we say? Amen. So let's look at, our, let me go over to 10 and 17 in Romans, then we'll come back to verse 4, we'll come back to chapter 4. So you go to Romans 10 and 17, it says, so then faith comes by hearing. Y'all see this? And hearing by the word of God. So if I don't hear the word, how am I going to believe the word? I've got to hear the word 
to speak the word. I've got to hear the word to believe the word, and I've got to hear the word to do the word because you can't do what you don't know. Amen. Yeah, you can't do what you don't know. You can do some things and look crazy, and then you can do the right thing and be productive. Amen. So that's why the four foundations of your faith is very important to understand and, empl and employ because you can come up with situations in your life, or should I say situations can come up against you in your life that will wipe out all four of them foundations. Yeah. You don't want to believe what you hear. You're too upset to say anything. I don't feel like doing nothing. Don't talk to me. Am I right about it? And it's in those situations and in those times where you have to figure out exactly what you're going to do with what you know, what you've been taught. Amen. Now, if you've never let anybody teach you anything, then you won't know what to do. That's why the scripture says faith comes by hearing. Amen. Now, look at verse 15. It says, how can they preach? How can this preacher preach unless he's been sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring tidings, glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. Oh, Lord. For Isaiah said, who have believed our report. See, sometimes you listen to folk that ain't speaking the word. They speaking them. Yeah, folk will talk them and don't talk the word. And you'll mess around if you ain't careful and believe them and they ain't told you the word. And then we'll get mad at God and say, well, see, that preacher told me, or they said they told you what they wanted you to hear. They didn't tell you what thus saith the Lord. Amen. See, don't ever let your faith, please write this down as well, don't ever let your faith get caught up in folks. Am I right about it? Don't ever let your faith get caught up in people. Never. Don't ever let your faith get caught up in people because people are going to fail you after a while. That's right, baby. Speak it. Yeah, speak it. Whatever you got to do, just go on and speak it. People going to mess you up after a while. As a matter of fact, if you would be honest, you can look back over your life right now and see some decisions that folk made for you that messed you up. Do I have any real folk in here? Amen. You ain't, yeah, thank you all for the hand raises. Amen. Because really, it wasn't what you felt peace about. It wasn't even what God said, but because you was in such close relationship with these folk. You didn't take your time and wait on God. You went ahead and made a move out of season. Can I get a witness? Amen. So you didn't, you didn't stand on those four foundations of faith. You, you stood on somebody close to you giving you advice. It's a difference between faith and advice. Faith comes by hearing. Faith is how you please God. Advice is is a direction you took from somebody you trusted. Am I making any sense? Yeah. Now, they may have meant well, but they might have gave you the wrong advice. Because sometimes, people are trying to advise you who ain't been nowhere. Yeah. Really, in order to advise, to advise people in certain seasons of their life, you need to have already been in that season yourself. People have a tendency to say, I know what you're going through. No, not if you ain't sat here. I was speaking to someone today who had lost their mother, and I said, I'm calling to check on you because I've been where you are. Amen. People who ain't lost nobody can't tell you how to feel if they ain't lost certain people in certain times. Come on, somebody. If people have not, you know, the worst thing in the world, if somebody married to put all their faith and trust in somebody single. And I didn't even mean single, single. <laughs> now you taking married advice. That's like somebody telling you how to drive. We ain't got a car. <laughs> ain't got no license. Y'all ain't talking. Now I know y'all may be saying just because a person ain't got a car don't mean he don't know how to drive. Yeah, but that, but it's a reason why these folk ain't got no car. <laughs> Amen. Don't don't ever take advice from folk who ain't lived where you gotta go. 
Because anybody who's been where you've been is going to steer you toward faith. And a faith to believe that in this situation, it was God that brought me out. It's going to take God to bring you out. It took God to keep me in my darkest hour. It's going to take God to keep you in your darkest hour. And so that's why many times in this dispensation of time now, people want to people wanna badmouth the church. And they want to talk about what they don't need from the church. Well, if you don't have a church, how are you going to have the word? I'm serious. If you don't, because what people don't understand is Jesus and his church are one. They're all the same. So if you don't want Jesus, you don't want his word. If you don't want the church, you don't want Jesus. Come on, somebody. See, let's go to let's not let's go over here to John first. Let me see here. Go to John. I'll come back over to Romans. Go to John 1 and 1, please. Amen. You had that say, man, John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the word. See that capital W? Make a note, that's Jesus. In the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God. And Jesus was God. Hello? The same was in the beginning with God. Now, that's enough right there to let apostolic people know they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> there is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. One person. You hear me? Three different dispensations. Come on, somebody. Hello? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So you, so you got to deal with the Trinity. The Trinity is right here. Yeah, who was with, it, it is, it say right, in the beginning was the Word. That's Jesus. And you see it capitalized, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Jesus is God, but he's still the Son of God. Which is the reason why when he got baptized, there was a voice came that said, this is my beloved Son. I won't get caught up on those doctrinal issues tonight, but just know I'm coming back for him. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Watch this. And the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. But wait a minute. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Who sent him? God. God has always made sure that we had somebody to give us the word. Hello? The same, verse 7, came for a witness to bear witness of the light. Now, who is the light? Notice it's capitalized, Jesus. That all men through him might what? See, you ain't going to believe until you get hooked up with Jesus. That's why Paul picked it up and said, how can they hear without a preacher? John had to preach Jesus before he came. Before he came, he was what? The forerunner. He said, there's one coming after me whose shoes I'm not worthy to latch. See, that's why you got to push back against these folk that don't ever want you to hear the preacher. Faith coming by hearing. How are you going to hear the word if the person sent to you can't give it to you? Praise the name of the Lord. He was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of that light. Verse 9, that was the true light, which the light of every man that cometh into the world. Watch this. He was in the world, Jesus, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, his own folk, and his own creation received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he what? Power. That power right there means he gave them the right to become, amen, the son of God. Even to them that believe on his name. Notice how many times here, praise God, the writer is using the word believe. Because believe is the verb form of faith. Amen? Let's break it down. Faith is a noun, but it's also a verb. Because the action part of faith is believe. 
You want to write that down. What causes me, Sister Pam Chatter, to believe when I do the work? The works show that I believe. So believe, B-E-L-I-E-V-E, is the verb form of the word faith. Faith is one of the few words that has a noun and verb connotation. Because Hebrew 11 and 1 told us it's substance. And what is a noun? A person plays, y'all ain't helping me preach here. A person plays a thing. So what does it say in Hebrew 11 and 1? Now faith is what? Substance. Substance. Woohoo! Of things hoped for. And then it turns into an adjective. The evidence of things not seen. See, faith has all the whole, it's a noun, a verb, and an adjective at the same time. It's a substance, you got to believe, and then it turns into describing what you've been praying for. I told y'all, come on out here to Bible study, I got something to say. Woo. Woo. I don't know, I didn't hear your message on <laughs> I mean your message? Oh, okay. Glad you preached it. Glad you preached it, amen. Y'all hearing me talk? Oh, now it's confirmation to you? Okay, praise God. Amen. Y'all hear me talk to you? Faith is heavy, Jack. That's why you got to know about it. Because when you know about it, can't nobody take it from you. And when can't nobody take it from you, then you can walk in it. Come on, somebody. And when you walk in faith, you can have whatsoever you decree over your life. Hey, God said, I will do it. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. Woo! Oh, bless his name. Yeah, see... Faith will open doors. Faith will do the impossible. But you've got to believe, amen. You've got to be a doer of the word. Scripture says not only do you, are you, you got to be a doer of the word, not just a hearer only, amen. Even though hearing is part of the foundation of your faith, you've got to believe. And then you've got to go into bed at night, praise God. You've got to go into your job. You've got to go in there and cook some food. Whatever you're going to do, just stop worrying about stuff that God already got under control. Amen. He already got it under control. You just got to make sure you got the right forerunner. You got to make sure that you listen to the right person. You got to make sure that you let your pastor feed you the word because it's the word. The old folks used to say it when they got up to preach. They used to say it's going to take the word to keep you. Y'all remember when they used to say that? It's going to take the word to save you. I remember the old man got up and said that whoever was introducing them, after all your shouting and dancing, they would get up and say, now nah, it's going to take the word. It's going to take the word to keep you. It's going to take the word to get you saved. That's why, praise God, the psalmist wrote, Thy word have I hid in my heart. You ain't hiding it in a pump. You hide it in your soul. See, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee, O Lord, because I believe. I believe. So I've got to be, I've got to be smart and wise enough to have faith be all three definitions for me. Whatever I'm believing God for now, if I don't have it right now, I still believe. Because it's what? The substance of what I don't have. So my faith is just, my faith is a substitute till I get it. Whatever house I want, whatever car I need to drive, whatever promotion I need, whatever, whoever I need saved, whatever I'm asking God, whatever I need to be healed, faith is the substitute. It's, it's, it's taking the place of, of it until I get it in my hand. While I'm believing God, my faith is what? In action. It's in action. Praise God. And then it, it, it describes what I'm going to get. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And while I'm waiting on that, while I'm believing that I got it, while I'm believing it as a verb, while I'm describing what I'm going to get, my works is showing God that I believe him. Amen. My works is showing God I believe what he's going to do. Now, those four pillars of your faith, praise the name of the Lord, are also works. Amen. They are also works. What's not works is church work. Amen. See, a lot of times we think church work are them works that's in James. See, as I want to bring out to people, because people need to understand, playing instruments is good, but that ain't faith. That ain't no works. That's not what that is. That's service. See, we don't confuse works with service. Can I get a witness? See, I want y'all to confuse works. Everything we do on the sound and the media and 
the instruments and all that stuff, that's service. That ain't works. Amen. Uh-uh. Because works directly involve, please write this down, faith works directly involve relationship. Faith works directly involve relationship. Amen? Yeah. Faith works directly involve relationship. A lot of times, people get mad at the church because they done did a lot of stuff that they thought was had something to do with faith. It didn't have nothing to do with faith. It was service to God. Amen? Well, I usher. Thank you for your service. Well, I, I, I shoveled the snow. I appreciate it. I cleaned the church. Thank you for your service. That had nothing to do with works. Go to, go to Romans 12 and 1. Let's talk about it. Go to Romans 12 and 1. Because sometimes we feel like I went to church and I work with the children. What am I blessing? Uh-uh. Wait a minute. That had nothing to do with works. Now, the Lord will bless you for your service, but that was not an act of faith. Do I have help? When you have Romans 12 and 1, please say amen. Put it on the screen, CJ. So, Romans 12, read. Right, you got it? Go ahead. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. See that? Come on. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. That's the least you could do. It's your reasonable service. When they built the tabernacle and they talked about the Levitical priest, the Levitical tribe, and the priesthood, and all, which the Levitical priesthood was the priest, and then you have the minstrels. That was not classified as faith. It was works. Excuse me. It was not classified. As works, it was service. Now, you had 12 tribes of Israel. The only tribe, watch this, that received finance was the Levites. Why? Because the Levites had to preach and play. Am I in the book? Now, the other tribes gave tithe and gave money so that the Levites could devote all of their time to preaching and doing the music. Yeah. But I tell musicians all the time, don't get it twisted. The word don't need music. The word stands by itself. But it is right to pay the musicians. And if they choose not to be paid, that's just a double blessing. Because it's their reasonable, come on somebody, Service. Study it out. They, did. They, they only paid the, the, Levi, the Levitical priesthood and the minstrels were paid because the other tribes had to make sure that when they came for tabernacle and came for worship that they had a word and that they had worship. And that was their reasonable service. When Joshua talked about ushering, he didn't, he didn't link that to faith. He said, I'd just rather watch the door because God's been so good to me. That had nothing to do with works. When James said, another one may say, I have faith. Another may say, I have works. And James said, I'll show you my faith by my works. He wasn't talking about being a musician. He wasn't talking about no armor bear. He wasn't talking about no executive pass. He wasn't talking about all these positions we'd have made up in this church. He was talking about real works of faith. Speaking the word, doing the word, hearing the word, Believing the word. Your faith is tied to the word, not a position. Yeah. All, I'm, I'm a chief adjutant. Thank you for your service. That ain't got nothing to do with faith. Because a lot of these folk got these positions, the biggest sinners in the place. Man, I'll sing on the praise team. Some churches, the whole praise team dirty. They all sleeping around. Three of them don't know whether they want boys or girls. Y'all ain't saying nothing up in here. But they won't talk about something. Well, that ain't no work. That ain't, really, we need to get them out of trying to serve. 
Because you can't serve the Lord's people when you a man wanting another man. Say amen, church. This is a holiness church. Bold to be. That strange fire to the Lord. How you got a homonger on the organ? Homonger ain't got no business on the organ. Told you, I'm from the old church. I don't play that kind of stuff. I got it right. You can't stay out all night and be drunk. I'm here to play the drum. Not here you ain't. You can't get the church's money in sin. The church ain't supposed to, the church ain't supposed to pay for your clubbing. The church ain't paying for your, your, your nudie bars and your strip club. Let me find it out. I don't mean nobody no harm. But souls are at stake in here. And I don't believe in sending strange fire to God. You can't build no powerful church with a whole bunch of sin going on up in here. Y'all okay? Oh, okay. I am a man of faith. God will do the impossible when you live right. God will heal your body if you praise him right. Hey, God will deliver your mind. You fast and pray. I know he will. I said, I know he will. We got to speak that word, do that word, believe that word, hear that word. We got to get that word in our spirit. We got to get that word in our heart. We got to quit acting like, well, you know, they young. Young folk can be saved. Young folk can be saved. Just like old folk need to stay saved. Got some questions? Y'all all right? I want to stop and make sure y'all got some questions. Amen. I'm swinging kind of hard tonight. Amen. I don't want nobody to choke. We got to make sure we understand the difference between works and faith. Yeah, it's your reason. What Paul said, it's the least you could do. If you don't got saved, what, ain't nobody, don't nobody need you to be saved to, to hold a pew down? The pews are nailed down. They ain't, they ain't getting up. You want to be saved and sit on the pew? No, we need, we need some service and some works. Amen. How the church going to function if don't nobody want to lend no service? Amen. Somebody got to tell folk, keep your feet in the house of the Lord. Somebody got to be willing to vacuum the house of the Lord. Somebody got to be willing to deal with the snow in the house. Somebody got to be willing to deal with the babies. Somebody got to be willing to deal with the sound. Somebody got to be willing to deal with the teenagers. Come on. Somebody got to be trained to do communion. The, the ordinance is baptism. We got we to gotta serve. We got to serve. Now, the Lord does bless your service. But your service doesn't necessarily strengthen your faith. That's where I'm trying to go. Yeah, the Lord will bless your service all day long. Trust me. You both, the old folks told us, whatever your hands find to do is what you both be doing in the house. He'll bless your servant. I know he will. But your works is what's th that relationship you have with the Lord. Well, Bishop, what are works? Let's talk about them. Works is one thing. One of the works you got to have is unconditional love. You ain't got no unconditional love. If you don't have agape love, then how do you expect for anybody to see you right? I believe that everybody that wronged me, God will vindicate me. So I forgive you, and I love you. Don't mean I'm getting back in relationship with you. Yeah, no, no, you can't come over here. No, you can't come over to my house. You don't, you don't. No, I done already done that. I've been there, done that, moved on. I love you. I'm gonna love you from a distance. Yeah, because you don't deserve my intimacy anymore. Do I have help? Don't be talking about, well, I can't cut them off. Cut them off. <laughs> love them and be done. You can love people and be done. I ain't got nothing against you. There's nothing in my heart against you. You know why? Because I want God to bless me, and I can't let my blessing get held up being mad at you. I forgive you. I release you. I let you go. I won't. Because I believe that God kept me, even though you mishandled my love, you mishandled my trust, you mishandled everything that I trusted you with. God still is going to bless me when I show him that my faith is in him. I was hurt, Lord, but you healed me. Yeah, they did hurt me. Stop acting like folk ain't hurt you. They did hurt me. They didn't do me right. They took my money and didn't give it back to me. I called them talking about my children. I called them 
running me down. They sent me the wrong text message. It was meant for somebody else about me, but they messed around and sent it to me. They did do this stuff, but I can't let it change me. Don't let people change you. Be who you say you are and have unconditional love. That's a work. Amen. That's a work. Another word. Write it down. Praise. Praise. See, your praise is so powerful that it can move mountains. Praise is a work of faith. Because when you ought to be crying and you can work up a praise, God takes note of that. Paul and Silas should have been somewhere mad. They had been whooped public. They had 39 stripes laid on them. They was in a dark, wet, nasty dungeon. And they hadn't committed no crime. They had not committed no sin. What they chose to do in that dark, wet, nasty dungeon and you understand, when them folk beat you with them whips back then, that stuff tore the flesh off of you. And they sitting there in feces and all this stuff, wet. They sitting in this dungeon. Ain't nobody took care of their wounds or nothing. They made the choice to believe God in the worst moment of their life. And how did they prove to God that they believed in him? Even in this moment, how did they prove to God that they believed that they was going to be delivered? They started praising God. And God heard it. And Silas started uh, uh, singing. And Paul started praying. They started praising God. And at midnight, woo, God shook the whole, let me tell you something. God will shake the whole world and let you go. He shook the whole world. And the angel showed up and took their chains off of them. See, that's how, see, they could have been in there mad. They could have been in there saying, we ain't going to preach no more. I can't believe God let this happen. They could have fussed and argued. Instead, they showed faith by praising God. That's what I be talking about. Just praise God in your house. Praise him in your car. When you get to church, you don't need to fight to praise God. Just praise him where you are. Demons will, be, demons will be hovering around. You say, what they praising God for? I just had them stopped by the police and they praising God. You was wrong. But the Lord delivered you. You really ought to praise God when you know you were speeding. And they let you go. Woo! Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. But for real, though. When the enemy has hit you with something bad, when demons know they, when you know demons messing with you, and you still go to church and praise God, you still pray, that's a work, that's a work of faith. When you're in the emergency, flat on your back, and they're trying to figure out what's going on, you sitting there praying, what's going to do? I'm praising God. I'm in God's hands. And I'm praising God. That's, that's one of those works. That's one of those works that, that the Lord is talking about. And then guess what? Watch this. When you demonstrate the works, then God connects the works to your service. See, the praise causes God to remember your service. He wasn't going to let Paul and Silas go out because they had preached to too many people. See, when you start praising God, when you don't feel like it, now it's two times to praise God. When you feel like it and when you don't. God starts remembering how you stood on your feet for ministry. He starts remembering how you sowed seeds. He, re he starts remembering how you picked folk up for church. He starts remembering how you said, I'll drive the van. He starts remembering how you did rehearsals. See, he starts because your praise, your praise brings your service before God's face.
your faith. See, I'm believing God. So I'm praising God. I'm praising even though I'm in the worst moment of my life. I'm in the brokenest moment of my life. I'm in the most hurt season of my life. I'm still praising God. I'm not upset about everything I did. Thank God for all my service. But I'm thanking God even when I ain't got number $2.13. Go ahead. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know why? <laughs> because the Lord deals with faith. Now, I know it's time to close, but I'll talk about Rahab the harlot at another time. She had faith. And she, and she was allowed to stay living because of her faith in God. See, yeah, faith is like, faith is like, let me tell you, there's, there's two things, and I'm telling you, because you said it. He said, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. However, you got to be saved to worship. But, but there are things unbelievers can get from God that church folk miss because they too ornery. One is, like you just said, if a person who's not saved have faith, will they get blessed by God? Absolutely. If a person sow seed and don't even have, and don't aim to save, they get blessed. Because the law of reciprocity was set up by God. He says, in Genesis 8, he said, long as the earth remain, seed time and harvest, hot and cold, shall never cease. Whatever you sow, you going to reap. So a lot of these people, you know, they sow money and they get money. They're blessed because they be millionaires, drunk as they can be. But they have give the Catholic Church $300,000. Leave it in their will. Leave the church in their will. We won't get, the black people won't get a church $3. All that shouted as we do, they'll get a church $3 and God will bless them. Because the Bible says what? He ran on the just as well as the unjust. They believe it. Let me tell you something. The, some of the biggest crooks believe in blessing the church. It's the same folk that won't bless the church. The crooks believe. And because they believe and they put it in action, they get blessed. So, yeah. Now, they ain't going nowhere. <laughs> no, shoot. Their name ain't written up there. They got all their glory down here. But they blessed down here. Yes. <laughs> all you do is speak the word. He told you, you ain't got to come. I believe, I look. I believe in, watch this, I believe in what I heard about you. So tough. <laughs> See, hear the word, speak the word. He heard about, he hadn't even seen Jesus in action. I just believe what I heard about you so tough. If you speak the word, I'll put my stuff in action. I'll believe in what you just began to say. And he went home believing that his daughter was here. See, that, that, that's, how, that's how you move God. You got to, when God say it, you got to believe, oh, it's already done. It don't look like it. I don't care what it looked like. It didn't come in the mail. It's still coming. It's already done. Not the way. I'm just hoping to believe. No, it's already done. It's over with. That's the end of it. God had already spoke. God had, Psalm 62, God has said it. Twice have I heard it. Power belongs to God. Once God said it, that's the end of it. But we go around acting like we got to keep on begging. God, I just hope you, I just hope you still do it. I told you it's done. When you going to believe? See, I praise God in advance. When I get in church, I, I'm praising God. I'm praising God for just bringing me over the highway. Hey, Amen. I'm praising God that the folk that came, that they made it. I, I, I don't need, you know, thank God for all the big stuff. But I, I praise God for the small things. Lord, just thank you so much for blessing me to be. I already believe that is already done. Now, it's better to live for the Lord and have faith. That way you can be blessed down here and your name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. But yeah, plenty of people to tell you, oh, they, yeah, I, believe in a, I believe in a higher power. They start talking all that stuff. I believe in, but, 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 then, but, then, but then they go to church and then they listen to that priest 
and he talked for 20 minutes and don't say a lot of nothing. And they give him, they get that shirt. I was in, um, I was in London last year, and I had a chance to go to Westminster Abbey. And if you don't even know, you know anything about Westminster Abbey, you know that is the woo. And uh, I was so excited when we went there. I forgot, you know, you know, I, I forgot that they was. They, I found out they was having church. Let me put it that way. It was a Wednesday, and we found out they was having church. So I said, "Oh, well, I'm going over here. I, you know, I'm going to church." I mean, they Catholic, but I'm going. So I had on shorts <laughs> and a T-shirt, and they were looking at me. So they looked at me, and they, they looked at us. They was like, now, when you come in here, don't touch nothing. Just come in and sit down. I want to tell them, I'm a consecrated bishop. You don't tell me don't touch nothing. But I look like I sold newspapers. <laughs> Amen. I went in there. <laughs> for the Church of God to Christ, you don't tell me what to anyway. I, I, I went in there, and I sat through Mass. And uh, I was sitting, I was so, you know, I mean, first of all, you're surrounded by dead folks. You know, dead folks all in the wall, in the floor. You know, popes and all these people, kings from 10, 1083. I mean, this is, this, if you're a history guy like me, this is, this is marvelous. I ain't heard nothing he's saying. Amen. And I'm looking around. And so then when I finally did hone in on what he was saying, he come out there and said, The Lord blesses you with your word. Then we stood up and he was done. I said, that's it? I'm not talking about the Catholic Church. I'm just saying. But everybody was locked up. And then another priest came out. And then he sung four verses. And then he left. And we stood up. And we sat down. Then another priest came out. He read. He sang something. And then they stood up. And then they left. And so I was like, you know, that was my first Catholic mass. You know, and I was like, oh, I'm working too hard. They got on full vestments on a Wednesday. I'm like, I mean, they was, I mean, full, you know, what I wear in the, in the convocation, they had on full tippet, full cassock, full roquet. I was like, it's Wednesday. And they was in full, but it's, 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 it's about how they believe and the order and respect they have for the church. We can learn a lot from the Catholic church. Yeah, I know people don't like, you can learn a lot from their order. Amen. Because when you believe, God blesses it. And we should love and respect the church. And we should love and respect the God of the Bible. Am I right about it? Amen. Just have faith. Don't worry about other religions. Just worry about what you in. <laughs> have, I don't spend a lot of time doing other religions. Just have faith in the God of the Bible. What you believe and watch God bless you. Amen. Because you can't. My thing is this. How are you going to criticize these other denominations when they are tremendously blessed? And then we, we, be, we ain't look, look at your neighbor and say, we are not for the struggle. We are not, not, not with all, not with all this. We talking about, we believe we ain't for the struggle. You ain't for to be trying to figure out how you going to pay your bills. And I got to pay this shut off notice and all this stress. You ain't for to live like that. Uh, when I get through this series, if you was living like that, I hope you ain't no more. Amen. Cause I don't believe in, I don't believe in a church full of broke folk. I'm telling you how I believe. I don't believe in a church full of broke folk. We ain't supposed to be broke. We're going to have some money around here. Amen. Amen. You ought not only be able to eat pork chops at the first of the month. You ought to be able to eat pork chops whenever you want to eat pork chops. Amen. All right. I'll pick up next week. <laughs> Lord, we thank you for all things, God. Continue to bless us. Bless the word, Lord, that's in our heart. Bless us, Lord, to act on the word, hear the word, speak the word, do the word, and believe the word. We'll give your name praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise, everybody. Amen. Would you prepare a seat for the Lord now? Amen. I, again, if today is your day to tithe, please give the Lord the tenth. Amen. And if you would sow a tangible seed, the ways to give are on the screen. If you need an envelope, thank you, Sister Burns. Amen. If you would hand out those envelopes. I challenge you to sow just a small seed of $22 today. Amen. If you would sow a seed of just $22. Raise your hand if you need an envelope. If you want to sow more than that, you certainly can. Uh, but I challenge you, remember God knows what you have. Never get to the offertory period and feel some type of way. Just do your very best for the Lord. God knows what you don't have. Amen. God knows what you have and won't give. But we are believing God to build ministry. 
And when you give, you sow into good ground. Those of you watching, same thing. When you give, you sow into good ground. And we encourage you tonight to sow into this good ground. You can give by cash app, dollar sign, C-O-F, Saginaw. Give a five, type in the church's name, Cathedral of Faith, Saginaw. Everybody stand. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Take that tithe and offering, lift it in the air. Lord, we thank you for this seed that we're sowing. We're definitely sowing it in the good ground. God, I thank you for blessing every tither tonight that's giving like you've asked us in the Bible. Lord, we thank you for your word tonight. Thank you for every giver, Lord. I pray that they be blessed because of their liberality. In Jesus' name, amen. Come now and bless the Lord in your giving. Come from the rear. Amen. That's right. Tap that phone right on there. Amen. Demonstrate your giving. It's a blessing to give. Praise the Lord. Bless you tonight. Yeah. Please remember, I've asked uh, the leaders, if you hold any position in this church, or if you just would like to know more about leadership, education, those type of things, one of the best speakers in the church will be at our Flint campus on this Saturday at 9 o'clock. Bishop Roderick Hennings is a very deep, deep presenter. And when I say that, he deals with how we should really educate ourselves about how to live saved. He is an excellent speaker. Amen. I have been wanting to get him for years, and I was finally able to get him. I've invited other pastors. Of course, as you all have, the um, Church of God in Christ Ministerial Alliance of Saginaw here. I'm the president of the Church of God in Christ uh, Alliance in Flint, and uh, I've asked him to come for those pastors and church leaders this Saturday at 9 o'clock at the Flint campus. Continental Breakfast will be served. I'm asking you all whether you're a leader or not, though. You can come on out Saturday. This will bless your entire life, trust me. This man is an excellent presenter on church growth, education, as well as the tenets of how we should be functioning in church. So if you can, come on out Saturday morning. I really want the leaders to come as well, too. If you're a trustee, uh, missionary, elder, whatever, I want you to come uh, down and be part of this uh, leadership. What I always do is I provide quarterly leadership sessions for church leaders so that you will learn how to govern and run a ministry. Uh, one thing you'll continue to find out about me is I don't run this by myself. There's people in place. Amen. And people in place, I don't, I don't want you to think I just put you in place and then don't give you the necessary tools to be effective. Amen. So trustees, especially, uh, we're going to talk about church governance, things of that nature. Uh, it's important for me that my leaders be trained on how to govern. Amen. And some of you are future leaders. You're going to be running auxiliaries in the church and things. As we continue to grow, it's my duty, it's my job and my vision to incorporate all the leadership with everybody that's here. I don't need people uh, on a consistent basis to come from Flint to do things here. They are here just to help me get established. But I want those of you who are here in Saginaw to make sure that we are running this campus. Amen. Because we have capable people here. I'm excited about everybody that is here and those that are coming and those that I know are going to even be coming as we make our transition to our new edifice in May. And so we want to be trained on how to lead. Amen? Yeah. Please, I am not a one-man show. You'll find out about me. I don't, I don't pastor like that. The church is about the people. And I trust people. Let me tell you, we've been here a long time. We grew up together. It's about trusting people to do the work of the ministry. Any church that focuses on one person ain't going to grow. Amen. It's about everybody loving everybody, serving in different places, and building the areas that you've been assigned to work in. Amen. So come on down Saturday at 9 o'clock. We won't be there long. Or if you got to leave early, something like that, you got other things to do. Look, I am a respecter of time. I understand Saturdays are days that people just may want to sleep till 3. I don't know. Wash clothes, do whatever. But quarterly, I have these so that we can be edified. Amen. Amen. Everybody stand. Thank God for our first lady tonight. Bless her. I'm so glad she's here.
Amen. She has so much she does, and I'm so glad she's here tonight. Okay, God, look on us now as we leave this place, but not your presence. Put your own protection around us. Lead us and guide us in all truth and knowledge. Be careful to give your name praise, honor, and glory. And God, please bring us back at the appointed time without the loss of any. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Greet somebody, then you're dismissed, amen.